migration section okay uh, so we have come so far so in this migration section we will be talking about cloud migration and its six r storage gateway uh, a snow family uh, aws dms data migration service aws cart that is the cart adoption readiness tool readiness readiness tool uh, disaster recovery uh, then we have aws fis fault injection simulator and the then we have virtual machine migration services and uh, here we would be starting with cloud migration the six r in this lecture okay uh, so uh, let's begin with that so we have to go over uh, a blog from aws which is uh, defining the six strategies to migrate application to the cloud and these are also called the six r so uh, there's a very complex diagram and uh, in that blog and uh, we are not going to go into the details of that diagram itself but what i am going to do in this lecture is to go over all the six r's and try to explain to you with examples what they correspond to what they mean and now I still i uh, do recommend that you do read the blog uh, and like uh, in your own time even after this lecture and it will help you solidify some of the learning so uh, uh, we have 6R and remember we are moving an application from your on-premise system to AWS. So this is why it's called a migration. Uh, so the most simple way of doing this is do something called re-hosting or lift and shift. Imagine something that uh, takes uh, something on-premise and does the exact same on the AWS cloud. So this is for simple migration, uh, simple migration. Uh, done by rehosting on AWS, it could be rehosting anything, your application, your database, your data, and uh, you are not leveraging any cloud optimization. Your application will be migrated as is running the exact same way it was running on-premise, but this time on AWS. So if you had five servers on-premise, uh, then you will have five servers on AWS also, uh, these kind of things. And you are even migrating the virtual machine. The idea behind rehosting is that you can still leverage some of the cost optimization from the cloud. You could save as much as around 30% on cost, for example, if you are moving in virtual machine to EC2 and you are leveraging EC2 reserved instances to get some long term discount. So, some examples would be to migrate a virtual machine using AWS virtual machine import or export, or to migrate another virtual machine using the newer AWS server migration service. So these are examples here. So remember here we migrate an entire virtual machine to AWS and we stop thinking about it. And so this is called the rehosting. Then we have replot replatforming and this is a bit more advanced. So this is for example to make it simple uh, like then you are migrating your database to RDS. So say you have an Oracle database and on premise and you want to leverage RDS because you want to get some cost savings. Uh, you want to get enhanced monitoring and uh, you want to get backup and restore features. You may want to get multi AZ replicas and all these kind of things. So if we, you are going to migrate your database, which is running on premise using some kind of platform uh, to RDS using the new platform being RDS. And uh, this is why it's called the replatforming. But uh, your database engine does not change. Okay. Well, what you had was Oracle on premise. And what you are going to have is Oracle on RDS. Uh, another example would be to migrate a Java application to Elastic Beanstalk. So it's uh, running locally on your systems and uh, you want to leverage Beanstalk because it has high availability, managed load balancer, managed load balancer, maybe it has good upgrade processes. And so you are going to leverage Java with Tomcat as a Beanstalk environment to migrate your Java application from on-premise on to the cloud. So here we are not changing the core architecture of our application or our databases. We are just leveraging some kind of cloud optimization. And we are making sure that the runtime on on-premise and the runtime on the cloud is exactly the same. So in this example, we are not rewriting our application. We are just running them on a different platform. Okay, next uh, we have repurchase. Which is called uh, which is called drop and swap. So this is not only related to the cloud. Uh, this can be uh, to the other service providers as well. So the idea is that you are moving to a 
you, you are moving to the other service providers as well so the idea like uh, so the moving to the cloud so because moving to the cloud because you have evaluated an opportunity there and so this is often uh, when you move to a software as a service platform SaaS and is going to usually expensive in the short term because you have to migrate stuff but uh, quick to deploy because SaaS uh, platform uh, SaaS platform will give you a click button and you say hey here I want a CRM service on salesforce.com and uh, if you have it you have it right now uh, some examples are for like examples uh, if you migrate your own CRM for on-premise to salesforce.com or your HR to Workday uh, for, or your CMS to Drupal as you can see this is not uh, related to AWS in a specific this is just a fact that uh, you are going to purchase a better solution moving forward uh, that's uh, go that's going to help you uh, being quicker to market for example okay uh, like then we have a more important and interesting refactoring and uh, re-architecting so in this example we are going to have uh, to reimagine how the application will be re-architected using cloud native features so think of using some stuff like sqs or s3 or lambda all these kind of things are native to aws and this is this is the stuff you didn't have on premise before uh, before so you have to refactor re-architect your application but the reason you want you would do this because uh, your business has a need to add feature improve the scaling and enhance performance of your application so one example would be to move to an application to use a serverless architecture and uh, use aws s3 uh, maybe while using a network file system for storing files but now only use AWS S3 and uh, this is not the same API S3 is a bit different because uh, this is a storage for your object and it's not a file system so you have to rethink your application and uh, refactor it and uh, re-architect it uh, next we have retire and retire is when you turn off things you don't need Maybe because you have re-architected an application and uh, therefore you don't need a few components, a uh, few micros microservices and this really helps you reduce the amount of surface attack area of your attacks. Uh, so it hence uh, gives you, uh, it hence gives you like more security. So for example, if you have less components in your infrastructure, then you are more safe. That's the idea. By retiring some stuff, we don't need, we are also going to save on cost maybe up to 10 to 20% and this is pretty interesting like some companies have a lot of stuff that, uh, that, that that they can already retire but they don't know about it and so this will allow you on top of it to focus your intention on resources that must be maintained maybe re-architected re-platformed or so um, so and so on and finally sometimes you have to make the decision to do nothing in cloud migration and this is retain so you do something for now like because it's too complicated to migrate migrate uh, or like you have monolithic applications big monolithic applications to migrate to the cloud or there's uh, a cost importance so these kind of things you need to understand that retaining something on premise is a decision in itself and so when you go and do a cloud migration you have to understand it's not just one and none of the other it could be a mix between retire, retain, re-architect, re-host, and re-platform, and these kind of things, okay? So, uh, going to the exam, you have to understand, uh, like, the based on the scenario that AWS will give you, what is going to be the right cloud migration, and uh, that's it. It should be very simple by now, uh, but remember to still read the blog, and I will see you in the next one.